he turned to me, man. He turned to me before he said it to my mom. He said, do you know your father was not a lazy man? Was not. You're still here working. Why yeah, are you telling exactly, me he was not? Exactly. You know what I mean? He was already gone. He was already gone, but he just wanted me, me to know. And then he turned to my mom and he said, you know, I was not a lazy man. And I looked at my mom and she looked at me. And that was the last thing he said to us, man. Yeah. Hello, everybody. You're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. As reggae music became an international phenomenon in the 1970s, Bob Marley and the Whalers clearly led the charge, followed closely behind by the second wave of reggae champions that included the Burning Spear, Black Uhuru, and Culture. Culture was led by the charismatic, inspirational frontman Joseph Hill and became one of the foremost reggae ensembles of the 21st century. But at the peak of the band's success, Joseph Hill died suddenly while on tour, leaving a void that was filled miraculously by his son Kenyatta Hill in circumstances that we can only describe as miraculous. In 2006, Culture were in high demand for concerts and were doing shows all over the globe. And in August of that year, the band was in the middle of a staggering European tour. After a show in Belgium, the band, along with Joseph Hill's wife, Pauline, and his son, Kenyatta Hill, got on their tour bus for a ride to Germany as they had a show in Berlin that evening. Joseph Hill had delivered a scorching three-hour show the night before and was in high spirits, even remarking that he felt great and could do another two-hour set. But that morning on the bus, he seemed strangely subdued and called his wife and son for a sober chat about the future of the band. It ended up becoming a full band meeting on the next steps for culture in the future. When the bus entered Berlin, Hill asked for a glass of water and after taking a sip, he said his last words. He turned to his son and said, you know your father was not a lazy man. Kenyatta was stunned and couldn't say a word. Hill then turned to his wife and said, you know your husband was not a lazy man. And after saying those words, he leaned back into his seat and took his last breath, just as the bus was pulling up to the gate of their hotel, leaving behind a distraught family and confused band members. News of Hill's death sent shockwaves throughout the global reggae community and grieved the hearts of millions of fans, including those who had been looking forward to seeing him during the European tour. His mysterious death was heavily investigated by the German authorities over several days, and every member of the band was interrogated and eventually released. The entire group was at a crossroads and held a meeting at their hotel to decide the next moves of whether to disperse and bring culture to an end after 30 years or to forge ahead. The band had always been united under Joseph Hill and bonded even tighter in the wake of his death and resolved to continue Hill's legacy. The band was under a contractual obligation to play 20 more shows and there was no one to be the band's lead singer. Kenyatta Hill, who was the band's sound engineer, began to frantically seek out a new lead singer from among the band's members. He asked Albert Walker, who was the founding member of Culture, who declined. He also asked Telford Nelson, a veteran vocalist and friend of his father's, who also declined. Getting desperate, he even asked his mother, who wasn't even a singer, and of course, she declined it. Kenyatta said that after a while, he noticed that everyone seemed to be sending signals to each other and all began to give him strange looks. All the members of the meeting, as if pre-planned, they all insisted that he give becoming the band's lead singer a try. Being a sound engineer with absolutely no experience in singing, he strongly declined it, but the band held firm and convinced him to give it a go in the least for their next show which was coming up on August 24th at the famous London Jazz Cafe where Kauto had been scheduled to perform alongside Nasio Fontaine and Steel Pulse. Kenyatta reluctantly agreed to the appeal and stepped on stage that night. It turned out to be a very difficult start for him as he got overwhelmed several times and burst into tears during the show and at a point he was unable to continue and stepped up the stage in defeat. He had all but given up and was about to throw in the towel when Nasio Fontaine and David Hines, the lead singer of Steel Pulse, came up to him backstage and both men hugged him tightly and offered words of encouragement that lifted his spirits enough to get him back on stage to continue his show. With almost no rehearsals and armed only with an intimate knowledge of his father's music, he began to sing and his voice came out sounding just like his father's. The band ended up delivering a great show that the audience really applauded and appreciated. Buoyed up by his successful first outing as lead singer, Kenyatta filled the gap left by his great father for the remaining 19 concerts to the amazement of fans, promoters and music critics. 
Each time he stepped on stage, he delivered electrifying performances time and time again. Aside from the eerie similarity in their voices, he gave himself totally to stage performances the same way his father had passionately done for three decades. The news of Kenyatta's performance on the tour sparked the popular saying which described the turnaround after Hill's death and the near dissolution of culture as magic, not tragic. Kenyatta Hill has released three studio albums since his accidental entry into the position of culture lead singer. Starting with 2007's Pass the Torch, 2011's Live On, Tribute to Culture, and 2014's Rhythm of Life. His most recent recording was the 2020 single Free Africa. What started as a stopgap measure to enable the band fulfill its contractual obligations has developed a life of its own and has turned into a permanent arrangement with Kenyatta Hill as lead singer of the Culture Band, delivering fervent, inspirational and passionate performances ever since. The band has been touring globally for the past 16 years as Culture featuring Kenyatta Hill, playing multiple venues every year in Asia, America, Africa and Europe. A huge testament to the massive level of acceptance of Kenyatta by the fans as the new voice of culture. Joseph Phil was an icon like no other and replacing him is impossible. But Kenyatta seems to have inherited the charisma and genuine aura of his father and if anyone could have kept culture going beside Joseph Phil, it could only have been him. We can be sure that Joseph Phil is resting pretty knowing that his legacy is in safe hands. There's a popular African saying that goes, the lion never gives birth to a goat. Kenyatta Hill is living proof of that adage. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, jobless.